nostalgia is a extremely powerful force because a lot of the times it belies the quality of shows that we enjoyed as a child. I know personally I've gone back and watched some shows that I used to love as a kid and it's mostly like half and half. I have found shows that I love that I still think are good. I think Hey Arnold is still excellent. You know, I still love Gem and the Holograms, Daria, um, Our Real Monsters, as told by Ginger. Love them. However, Two of a Kind, Full House, Family Matters, to a degree, some episodes of Keenan and Kel, most of them I still like. I still love Good Burger. Good Burger is, is fucking hilarious, but something's kind of like, ah, this isn't how I remember it. Or how I thought I remembered it to be exact. So what I decided to do in the these videos called my Nostalgia, Nostalgia Watch, and I have also been doing these on Tumblr, so if you want to see what I've been doing already, I'll link to it down below my Tumblr. But while I was watching Young Justice, I kept constantly comparing it to Teen Titans because they are sort they are for all intents and purposes in that same kind of demographic. It's the same it's the idea of the young superheroes fighting their battles, growing as a team, etc. and so forth. And I really didn't like Young Justice. And I kept comparing to Teen Titans and thinking like, Teen Titans did this better, I liked it better. But then I was just thinking to myself, do I really remember Teen Titans the way I think I remember Teen Titans? Is it still good? And so what I decided to do was to watch the entire first season of Teen Titans and think about if it held up to my nostalgia. It is simplistic enough that it can be enjoyed at any time and purpose, yet it's also intelligent enough that you can look at it and see depth. But it doesn't try very hard to be like, ooh, look at us, we're so, we're so, you know, we're so amazing, look at this twist, isn't that twist exciting, aren't you shocked? You're not shocked? Well, damn. You know, it, it doesn't try to be so heavy-headed with like, oh my god, you weren't expecting that. It's more to do with building the characters. Teen Titans is much more character-driven, I have found. And I think that's what I love the most about the show. As I was going through all the episodes, what I found is that what makes the show work is that you believe that these characters work together as a unit. You believe that they are a team, that they are friends, and that they care for one another. And the first season really builds up those relationships. Um, the first episode you have a split with the team between um, Cyborg and Robin, and you see their personalities come out. You understand who these people are. And you don't need to, to read the comics to connect with them on any level. Like, you see Dick Grayson's personality, you see Starfire's personality, you see Robin, you see Beast Boy, you see Cyborg. You don't need any other information but what you have in front of you, and you get these characters. And they do that throughout the entire season, so that when the whole Red X storyline and later on the Apprentice storyline comes in in season one, it is poignant because you know that they trust each other and they care about each other, but they but they are going to fight each other no matter what because it's the right thing to do. And I think that's what makes the show so strong. The humor in the show, for the most part, holds up. There are a few jokes that it was, it was never like it, it missed. Like I was like, oh, that's so horrible, so unfunny. Some of them are funnier than others. Um, it's for a different audience. I'm older than I was when I first watched the show, so not everything's going to be like, oh, super hilarious. But at the same time, I thought it was very relatable. What I like about Teen Titans is that they feel like teenagers, especially Starfire. I have grown to really love Starfire's character when I rewatch the show because I totally feel like her insecurities, like when Blackfire comes in, in the episode Sister and she questions her place on the team and her growing as a person in that episode and realizing that like she belongs there even though she doesn't exactly fit in is so key to the teen experience without being this heavy-handed narrative about her being afraid of not being accepted, but then it's not in a, in a light-hearted way, but you still get that same emotional impact because you can see how she 
is afraid and struggles with it and how, you know, her sister comes and she's like so super cool and perfect who can, you know, she can relate to everyone on the team, even Raven. And she's kind of like, why can't I be like her? And I think, you know, as a younger teen of that age of the 13, 14, you feel that way around older siblings or people. It's like, oh, why can't I be like her? How does she know everything? And I just don't. And it, it works really well. Um, Beast Boy's um, issues with him using humor as a cover for his um, issues, that was really well done. Um, Raven, her story arc is really interesting because she has a lot of episodes with people to develop her relationships. She's like the Zuko um, of the show, kind of. She has an episode with Cyborg where they kind of bond. She has an episode with Starfire where they bond. She has an episode where, you know, her and Beast Boy kind of bond. Um, as well as Cyborg and um, Nevermore, and you get to see her depth. You get to see who these characters are. And it's just kind of like, I had forgotten how good that was. You know, as a kid, I didn't really think about the writing, but now that I'm older, I mean, like, the writing in the show was really good. It balanced the teen teenness of the show with the comic bookness and dealing with those heavy handed issues. Because when you look at Trigon, it's just like, that's the devil. You know that's the devil, and you know that, you know, something bad is happening in her past to make her this way. You get that. And yet, it's so subtle. It's subtle, because it, it could just be a scary demon when you're a kid. But then you look at it out like, that's the devil. She's a demon. This is fucking crazy. Why is there a demon on this team? So, that was really interesting. Um, With Robin, this season, because it deals with them talking, trying to discover Slade and realizing who Slade is, it's huge development for him because you see how much of Batman is in him without Batman being there. And I love that because one of the things I don't like is when you have the Justice League mixed with the Young Justice team. Because I feel like, just just have one or the other. Because I feel like if you have more adults in the show, it weakens the authority of the, of the younger people. Because it's kind of like, if they're so good, why do you, I need to be hovering over them? The Teen Titans run as their own unit. You don't see the Justice League, you don't see Batman, you don't see Superman, you don't see any of those people. There are hints of them, but they never come in. Because if so, they overpower the show. Because if I have a choice to watch a show between about Robin and a show about Batman, Batman. A show between Wonder Girl, Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman. Sorry. Like, so, you see just how much of a control freak he is, a perfectionist he is. He has his teen moments, of course, when it comes to the mission, he becomes obsessive and the Red X storyline even though you know it's supposed to be like oh my god Ro Robin's the bad guy as no doubt you see that and it's not so important that about the twist it's about how far he's willing to go to manipulate his team in order to 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 catch Slade because it reminded me I had just watched Justice League Doom so I was thinking about like how Batman has all these things about how to defeat his teammates on his own software and he has all these backup plans and he's always willing to go outside the team to, you know, get stuff done. Robin is that same way and you did that and you made that so clear without having to bring in any of, like, Batman into the character, which is, which is great. There's a little allusion to Batman, which is, which was so funny when I watched it now. It's kind of like, it's Batman! But, again, it's, Im it's implied, it's not overtly stated. You don't need all that heavy-handedness. And I love it because I really feel like they got the essence of Robin while still making him a character that as a kid you could just watch and enjoy without being like, oh my god, he's being so hardcore again. But I, So I really love that. Um, Cyborg is kind of under, most underdeveloped of the characters. Um, he's, you know, he's a jive-talking black robot. But at the same time, the episode where he shuts down and you realize that like, even though he, you know, he, he's very human, he's also a, he's a cyborg, he's a robot, and he is bound to those ideas. Like, when Gizmo was, like, fiddling around with him in that episode, um, um, School's Out, or something like that, I think, yeah, in the episode where the Hive first comes and is introduced, and Gizmo was playing around his systems, it freaked me out. Not in, like, it was scary, just, this, I was finally thinking about, like, that's his body, that's his inside, his systems are, like, his brain, it's how he functions. You can just go in there and just fill with him like that? Like, that's creepy. But it's not done in a way that isn't, that it makes you feel like, oh my god, unless you think about it. Beast 
boy, um, his character gets death in comparison with other characters. Like when he gets in that whole fight with Starfire and he's like, um, a glore bag, um, about his joking nature. When he gets into the argument with Aqualad, when he gets into the arguments with Raven, he is one of those characters who, like, he bounces off other characters. And I know in season two, that's when Terra comes in, is when we get more development for him. But at the same time, you get, you know who these characters are. And so, when I was watching the Apprentice storyline, and the scene comes up with Starfire and Robin, and Starfire is like, you're my friend, and I don't want to live in a world where we have to fight. That meant something to me. That meant something because you felt like these characters were friends. And if you had not delivered that through the last 12 episodes, that thing would be meaningless. They are friends. And they care about each other. And that scene is one of my favorites in that season just because it, it, it proves to me how good their storytelling is because I believe that. So, to me, I feel like Teen Titans, while it has its flaws, because there's an episode, Thunder and Lightning, I hate that episode. I think that episode is so corny. It is, it is the most childish of all the episodes. The Mad Mod episode is kind of like, because it's just kind of filler and it comes right after a really intense arc. So it's just kind of like, uh, but for the most part, even the humorous episodes are balanced with something else. Because you see them facing different kind of challenges, and you still get to see how their characters interact and develop. So it's never a waste of time, except the Thunder and Lightning episode, but even that had a meaning to it. But, so it has its, its faults. The animation isn't really, like, now that I'm actually paying attention to animation, I'm just like, well, the, the anime style allows them to cut corners on certain things, which is... You know, when it compared to Young Justice, when it's like more crisper animation, it's kind of like, yeah, you know, it's not as good. But at the same time, it has its own kind of humor to it that I enjoy it regardless. So, um, I make note of it as a, as a complaint, but it doesn't bother me, but I'm just trying to be fair and be honest about it. The storylines, you know, they're not like super angsty or whatever, but they also carry enough emotional weight that I enjoy them. And I just felt like this show held up so well. It is a good show. And I think that despite the cartooniness of it, the overly cartooniness of it, it still packs a really strong wallop. And I and I love it. I'm looking forward to watching season two and revisiting all these characters that I loved as a kid and seeing them through a new light. And also might I just add that I'm extremely happy to see that neither Starfire nor Raven are defined by relationships by their relationships with just men. Like, they aren't put in to be in relationships. Like, you know that Starfire and Robin are going to be a thing later on, and it's kind of hinted that they care about each other, but it's all done in the layer of friendship. Like, there's nothing romantic about their interactions early on, kind of, sort of, but overall, it's mainly the friendship between the two characters. They are best friends first, and that meant something to me. Even Ra Raven and Beast Boy, I don't care what anyone says, that, that thing was being implied all throughout this season. They were always interacting together, but regardless of those hits and implications, Raven is never just like, oh, you're gonna be the chick for that guy, or you're gonna be chick for that guy. They exist beyond just being, you know, fan service or being there to be the chicks. They are good characters by themselves, and they are developed, you know, they are developed by themselves. So that way, even when Raven and, uh, not Raven, even when Robin and Starfire become a couple, you had this! You had this buildup of them being friends for it to now mean something when they actually become a, a couple. But when I get to those seasons, I'll talk more about them and see how I feel about them. But anyway, Teen Titans Season 1. Overall, it holds up to my nostalgia. 4 out of 5 stars. Um, Next, I will be doing a review of the first three seasons of Boy Meets World. That's exciting.